In this clip, I want to introduce you to linear programming by way of a very simple example. I'm going to do this example in two parts. The first clip will be simply the problem formulation, which is an essential step before you move to the spreadsheet. And in the second clip, I'll develop the spreadsheet from scratch so you can see how that's done and provides a template for future work. Okay, this is the description of the situation. We have a mythical company that produces only two products from a certain grade of steel, which apparently is on allocation right now because they can only get 2,000 pounds of it from their normal supplier at contract prices for this period. And we know that it takes two pounds of steel to make each unit of product one and three pounds to make each unit of product two. We're told that these products have profit contributions of $100 and $200 a unit respectively. And, oh, by the way, there's a contract to deliver 60 units of product one, so we have to make at least that many this month. And furthermore, we have a capacity constraint on product two. I guess the equipment that makes it can only handle 720 units this month. That is a statement of a situation. It's not yet a problem statement, although it's pretty well formulated, so it's not, not a big leap to get to a problem statement. But we do need to ask the critical questions. What's our goal? What are we going to change? and what are the constraints. So the goal, well it makes sense that our goal here would be to maximize the amount of profit we can generate in a month. There's really nothing else about this problem that would make any sense in terms of managerial decision making. So we'll go with that as our goal, we want to maximize the total profit contribution for the month. The decisions that we are going to make could be framed in a couple of different ways, but the natural sort of decision that you would make if you were running this kind of operation would be to decide how many units of each product to commit to produce in the, in the upcoming month or to schedule to produce. You could frame your decisions around the allocation of steel to different products, but you'll quickly find that that makes for a more complicated calculation, although the results would be the same in the end. There's also a slight uh, conceptual difference in the meaning of those decisions, which might come into play depending on the, on the situation you're in. But the natural decision for this problem would be units of each product to produce. The constraints are fairly clearly stated, so we don't have to dig around too much for those. Clearly there's a finite amount of steel available, so we can't exceed that. And we have a contract that creates a minimum production requirement for product one, and we have a limited ability to produce product two. We're limited by some capacity other than the amount of steel. You notice that when we're formulating this problem, there's an implicit assumption that we can sell everything that we can make. Uh, that's not always a given, so be careful how the, the problem is worded and think carefully about what assumptions are embedded in the model. For now, we'll just go ahead with that and assume that uh, any amount we produce is going to be within demanded quantity, so there's no, no particular problem there. All right, we need to turn this into a model now, not just a problem statement, but a model with actual equations in it. So let's start with what we call the objective function. We have to get something that links our decisions to the goal, the profit that we're trying to make. And in this case, it's pretty simple, which is typical of linear programming problems. Usually the objective function is pretty straightforward the complexity tends to come in and the constraints. But our objective is profit. We get $100 from every unit of product one we make and sell. We get $200 from every unit of product two we make and sell. So profit equals 100x1 plus 200x2. Okay, that's easy enough. Now we can go to the constraints. And the most important constraint, or at least the most complex of the constraints, is the one about the steel. Obviously, the, the total amount of steel is limited, so we're going to have to calculate how much steel would be required to produce whatever uh, production quantities that we decided to, to produce. So we could test that and see if it's actually going to work or not. So if we think about the amount of steel per unit of product, we see that if we make decisions x1 and x2, as in the previous slide, then the amount of steel that our decision will require is 2x1 plus 3x2. So whatever numbers we put in there, we'll get a quantity of steel required. And as long as that number is less than the 2,000 pounds we have available, then we're OK. If it's greater than 2,000 pounds, that means those decisions are not feasible. We can't do that. 
we'll have to try something else. So we had to do a little extra calculation there. Uh, the quantity of steel is not used anywhere else in this problem. It's simply calculated for purposes of validating the constraint. So we'll put that one down. We'll move on. The remaining constraints, the two that were given in the situation statement, are first of all that we have to produce at least 60 units of product one. So that's very easily stated. X1 must be at least 60. And we're told that we can't produce any more than 720 units of product 2, so that's equally simple that x2 has to be less than or equal to 720 units. There is one more constraint that we handle in a different way, so we don't often write it out in full, but it, it's worth keeping in mind that although negative production quantities make no sense in our world, uh, in Excel they would make perfect sense, so algebraically we have to limit what our spreadsheet can do with the decision variables. So we specify that the decisions that we make, the production quantities, cannot be negative. Now we already said that x1 has to be greater than or equal to 60, so that's covered, so that would be redundant. But we haven't said anything about x2. So arithmetically we could have a negative value for x2, and it might solve all right, but of course it's completely meaningless in the real world. So well, I'll show you how to handle that once we get to the, the spreadsheet model. Okay, that does us for the, uh, the objective function and the decision variables and the constraints. So we have actually a complete formulation of our model now. And these types of problems are typically presented in this format where the objective is to minimize or maximize some function of the decision variables. So that's our first line. We see that right here, that our objective is to maximize 100x1 plus 200x2. The ST here means subject to, meaning these are all the constraints. Now notice the format of the constraints. The constraints have right-hand sides, which are usually numbers, and these numbers are given to us. These are not anything that we calculate. They're simply handed to, to us by the outside world. These are the constraints that we have to live within. These constraints also have a left-hand side, which is something we calculate. We calculate what the, the value of that parameter would be based on our decisions, x1 and x2. And as long as it meets this logic test, greater than or less than, whatever we specify, then we have a feasible solution. When you set up the, the problem in this way, it has two really important advantages. The first one is that you can now verify quite easily that the objective function and all of the constraints are in fact linear combinations of the decision variables. So this qualifies as a true linear programming problem, which means that we can turn Excel loose on it using the linear solution algorithms, which are much faster and much more reliable than the nonlinear varieties. So when we express it this way, we can see clearly that we do in fact have a linear programming problem. Secondly, when we set it up this way, we have a rather nice little template that we can translate into Excel. And in fact, we're going to do exactly that. We're going to put this into Excel in pretty much exactly this form right here. And I'm going to close this clip right now. And the next one that will follow right behind it, we'll take this page and put it onto an Excel spreadsheet.